What you are looking at is a still image of one of Kilauea's webcams showing a spectacular lava fall cascading down the western edge of Napao Crater. This cascade of lava measures a whopping 50 meters or 164 feet tall, with this particular spot having been pouring lava for more than 12 hours straight now. Today is the fourth day of Kilauea's ongoing flank eruption in its middle east rift zone, marking the longest such eruption in this particular region of Kilauea since the 18 day long eruption in 1977. Of course, this statement excludes the 1983-2018 Pu'u'u'u cone. For a quick clarification, when volcanologists discuss Kilauea's East Rift Zone, we refer to three separate areas which have the approximate boundaries shown on screen, the Upper East Rift Zone, the Middle East Rift Zone, and the Lower East Rift Zone. Eruptions in each of these regions behave in different manners, with Middle East Rift Zone eruptions, for example, tending to be brief, but experiencing multiple less than 24 hour long pulses of eruptive activity. A fourth such pulse began around midday yesterday on September 18th when a new fissure emerged on the surface and erupted lava 600 feet west of what had been the westernmost active fissure of the eruption. This new area created a short lived lava flow which covered about a quarter acre of ground. Then, later in the day, the same fissure which erupted on the 15th and 16th erupted again, this time producing spectacular 100-foot-high lava fountains. As molten rock fell back to the ground, it quickly flowed downslope to the east-northeast, burning new patches of forest before cascading into Nepao Crater. It then flowed in a south-southeastward direction and is still slowly expanding in that sector at the present. Speaking of Nepal Crater, a viewer of mine had asked what the ages of the other lava flows in this 3600 foot long and 2700 foot wide pit crater are since it appeared to be somewhat vegetated. And here you go. While the oldest exposed lava flow on the crater floor is from 1840, other lava flows are also exposed from 1965, 1968, 1969, 1983, and most recently before the current eruption, 1997. And now, here's the overlay of the ongoing September 2024 eruption. During the last 24 hours, the still expanding lava field has added at least another 10 acres, bringing the total lava field to an area of 229,496 square meters, or 56.71 acres. This seemingly increased rate of lava fusion during the last 12 hours matches a trend showed by the summit tilt meter chart. While the summit deflation, which indicated magma draining away from Kilauea's summit magma chamber into its east rift zone had seemingly ceased for 6 hours on September 17th, it has since resumed albeit at a lower rate. In other words, these signals suggest that more pulses of eruptions are to soon follow in Kilauea's Middle East Rift Zone. This is likely to feed eruptions further to the east and west along the existing fissure which now measures 1.8 kilometers or 1.11 miles in length. However, once again, this is all occurring in a remote area of Volcanoes National Park, meaning lava flows are not currently threatening any structures or are likely to do so. If you live in Bahala or Nalehu, you likely have noticed that the sky is a bit hazy. The reason for this is a phenomenon known as VOG, which represents a mixture of primarily sulfur dioxide but also other volcanic aerosols. While all erupting vents are currently producing sulfur dioxide gas, ones with a distinctively blue tinted bloom are specifically rich in it. As a final note, I would like to thank my new YouTube channel member Geoman for supporting this channel.